Hi, my name is Alex, and today I'm going to be going over advanced constraints in SDK. So that's things lighting, temporal constraints, uh, even RF constraints. I'm going to go through all of those, uh, go through some of the plugin points, as well as how to impose some of those constraints, and then kind of show examples as we go along uh, how those constraints are going to limit my access. So in SDK, uh, a lot of times people are using the program for line of sight. When can my ground station see my satellite? Now, that's a great analysis if you want just general windows, uh, but why stay at that level of fidelity when you could get even deeper? Uh, why just want to see when my ground station can see a satellite when, in fact, I'm actually using a telescope, and if I'm using a telescope to see a satellite, I'm going to need the satellite to be lit by the sun, but I'm also going to need darkness at my ground site. It's a really simple example, but if I can do that, why wouldn't I? Why would I just take any time and then do a separate analysis to determine when I'm going to have those conditions? So I'm actually going to start with that example. You can see on my screen here, I've got a LEO satellite. It's actually going to be the ISS, so that's inserted from our standard object database. If you've ever done a training with us, this might look really familiar. Uh, this is a where is the ISS type scenario. So one of these ground facilities I have is HQ. It's actually where I'm sitting right now. Uh, so that's in Exton, Pennsylvania. I'm going to be looking up at the sky. I want to see when, if I stand on AGI's roof, can I see the International Space Station? So to do that, I'm going to start just by computing access. So I'm going to start with the ISS. I'm going to compute access to my headquarters, facility object. I'm going to compute. You can see here that my timeline view has automatically added those access intervals. I can see that they're not particularly long uh, because it's going to be very quick. I can see my 2D graphics window, uh, what passes are actually going to be viewable. Again, this satellite's moving pretty fast. The ISS is in pretty low orbit. And so my intervals aren't all that long. I'm going to minimize my access window for now. Now, what if I want to impose a constraint, just like I said, maybe I'm looking at a telescope, even with my eye, an optical sensor, if you will. I need my satellite to be lit, and I need my facility to be dark. I'm going to start by adding the sunlit constraint to my satellite. So in the ISS, ISS's properties, I'm going to scroll down to the constraints, and I'm going to go to sun. Here's where I can add a lighting constraint. You can see this box here. I'm going to check the lighting constraint, and for my satellite, I need direct sun. So I've already set direct sun. You can see that I could also choose penumbra, umbra, penumbra, or direct sun, any combination of penumbra, umbra, and direct sun. So on HQ, you can see that I've added the lighting. But now I wanted to choose umbra. So that's going to be darkness. I'm going to go ahead and apply that constraint. So now I'm going to, you can see that my axis automatically recomputed. If I want to go ahead to verify. I can compute that access once again. You can see that I have one pass in my 24-hour scenario. We can see that on my timeline view as well. I'm going to go ahead and move my scenario time to that instant. OK, and we can see that in this case, it does look like it's dark at HQ. And it does look like my satellite is sunlit. So it looks like I'm good to go. Uh, if I were to go ahead and choose this scenario for a week maybe at a time, I probably will have a few more passes, uh, but in this case it looks like I only have the one. Now that's a great example of lightning constraints, but what if I wanted to choose something else? What if I, say, wanted to use a vector constraint, uh, or maybe a temporal constraint, using intervals that I've defined in analysis workbench based on some, some data provider, for instance. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and Turn off ISS, so I don't want to see that one anymore. I'll rewind my scenario. So in this case, I'm going to do HQ to a HEO satellite. So that's a Molniya orbit. Some of you might be familiar with that. Uh, but I want to see when I have access between HQ and my Molniya satellite. I'm going to go ahead and go back to access. And I want to do HEO, great, to HQ. I'm going to compute. You can see I've got long access intervals, uh, and that kind of makes sense because this orbit, since it's highly elliptic, we're going to be over the same area for a very long time. Let's say now maybe I only want access when I'm more than, I don't know, let's say 20,000 kilometers from my ground site. 
I'm not quite sure why this might be. Maybe it's because your sensor is only going to have a resolution that works at that distance. I'm not sure. However, you can go ahead and do that fairly easily. If I go to HQ, and first I want to turn off that constraint I added earlier. And that might actually give me more intervals here. But I want to go ahead and now add a vector constraint. So I can go ahead and add, and this is actually going to pull up the vectors from analysis workbench. What I want to do is use a two vector to my HEO satellite, and that's going to give me the magnitude. I only want to use a minimum. here so we can change the minimum and max down in the bottom right I don't want a max I only want a minimum and I'm going to do 20,000 kilometers and we can see instantaneously this changes my pass on the right that purple line got a little bit shorter if I go ahead and hit OK I actually have less time now on my timeline view as well Go ahead and recompute access yeah, as it automatically recomputed, but we can see that's much shorter uh, than if I had not used that vector constraint. Uh, you can imagine any analysis workbench vector in your scenario can be used as a vector constraint. So the magnitude of that vector that can be particularly powerful, especially if you're doing something like uh, maybe say an RPO sequence. But once my one satellite gets too close to the other. I'm not going to be able to differentiate between their communications, so I actually just want to shut off access. I know at that point I'm not going to be able to access one satellite over the other. Uh, could be particularly useful when you're using the timeline view to determine when I'm going to be able to communicate with my satellite. I'm going to go ahead and turn off that vector constraint I had on HQ. Some of the other constraints that I can use that might be of particular interest are temporal constraints. So here I can go ahead and specify, you know, start stop time, which can be useful, but that's just going to be a blanket time. Maybe it's a blackout window for your ground site, something of that nature. I could also use just duration. So every pass needs to be under a certain duration, which will just cap my access duration uh, during a certain pass. Or I can go ahead and give it a minimum. So I need at least five minutes of time, say, to count this as an access. I could also use intervals which is particularly interesting because they can actually import intervals from analysis workbench. So some of the pre-computed intervals for analysis workbench are things like lighting intervals. Uh, so this is just going to give me intervals when my satellite, for instance, is lit. Uh, however, I can also create custom intervals based on values uh, that are in analysis workbench, so things like scalar calculation values, uh, which I can pull directly from data providers. Uh, this is a really strong combination that allows me to really use anything, any data provider that SDK will generate for access. It doesn't necessarily have to be a vector magnitude. Uh, it can be maybe specifically the Y portion of a vector, specifically in track. We can also do things maybe like take a specific data provider, uh, something like Delta V, and once I get to a certain Delta V, I no longer have communication. Um, again, kind of a strange use case, but I can do all of these things, and you can see that maybe the possibilities are really uh, not quite endless, but certainly uh, really, really vast. One other really interesting constraint is the zone constraint. Uh, so that's actually going to be on my satellite. If I go down to zones, I can actually create uh, exclusion or inclusion zones. So, so these are latitude and longitude values uh, that actually bound an area where I can or cannot have access. So if I wanted to, uh, I could say I really am not supposed to be looking here. Um, when do I have access to anywhere but here? Uh, or for instance, maybe I'm doing a study, a optical study. I'm taking images of one specific area. I do not care at all about anything else. I want to know when my satellite or a sensor on my satellite uh, can look at that specific area and only that area. Uh, maybe particularly useful for imaging the polar ice caps or something of that nature. There are a lot of constraint categories uh, and a lot of really interesting ones, a lot of really interesting values. Uh, of particular interest under advanced, we have ground track and we can actually specify ascending or descending only. So that's going 
up in latitude, right? Uh, so from the South Pole to the North Pole, um, or descending the opposite of that. So right now I have ascending only. I can go ahead and apply that. You can see that my axis here in the 2D graphics window uh, and my axis intervals actually decreased and really by half, right? Because I'm only taking the ascending um, port part of my orbit. Lastly, I want to go ahead and take a look at some communication constraints. So I've got Vandenberg here, uh, so it's on the west coast, and then I've got a receiver. And then on my geo satellite, uh, I have a transmitter. And so in this specific case, I've named it Wobble Transmitter. Uh, that's because maybe my satellite is wobbling. Something hit the corner of my satellite, and suddenly I've got a strange procession. I can see on the right here my antenna pattern is rotating. Uh, this is just modeled with a, a spin, but maybe this is happening, maybe my satellite's spinning. Uh, but I know that if I want to communicate with Vandenberg, I actually need a certain received power or a certain you know, antenna gain to get to that point. So this could be a really useful study. I only have access under this constraint. And with these antenna patterns, you can go ahead and add very detailed high-level fidelity simulation constraints, uh, so access constraints that are based on things like received isotropic power or link EIRP, -E um, things that you would find in a link budget report in STK. Um, so again, another really, really good use of the constraint feature on your objects in SDK, uh, something that can be used with a high fidelity ANSYS HFSS pattern, um, something that will really bring your simulation to the next level and allow you to make really great mission decisions um, all with just an SDK scenario on your computer. Uh, so, again, thanks for watching, and have a good one.